I'm really curious about this defining thing. So if it's something, are you playing older songs to bring people back to memories, like to connect them? Or is it like just songs and music in general to check in with their, you said something about seeing how it makes them feel. So emotions, I'm really trying to wrap my head around this. I'm sorry if it. Yeah, emotions will, if a client has a request, we'll do that. Well, let's, let's today, let's, let's listen to this song and let's break down what you feel the artist is saying. How does this relate to your life? How does the tone of the song make you feel? Are, are you anxious? Are you sad? Are you, how can we break this down to, to get to the, uh, the roots of, of how you're feeling? And that's the important thing. We play a lot of recovery songs or songs um, from recovering addicts um, that we know are geared towards um, their using. So that obviously helps for them to relate. And a lot of it is so people don't feel alone, you know? Being an addict is such a lonely thing, especially for gamblers. We are most often isolators. We don't want to gamble with other people. Um, while we're gambling, we want to be alone. So it's really to trigger emotion. Even if it triggers sadness, we, we have people that cry. Um, but you're releasing this energy, you're releasing these emotions, and you're making them become aware and try to understand what these feelings inside are doing to them and, and why am I feeling this way. So um, it, it's another way to bring out emotions in people. Thank you for explaining that a little more. I'm, I'm still intrigued by the whole concept. <laughs> so... There's music therapy. You mentioned GA. Uh, I know I've been learning about recovery dharma. You're definitely more professionally skilled than I am in this arena. So what is your opinion on best recovery methods or method? And it's a trick question. It is. It's a trick question because we run our own program and what works for me doesn't necessarily work for other people and we're taught to not push our beliefs or our things on other people um, but that being said um, I think it's the most important thing to be is is actually working something working a program um, I think you know a lot about that because you've dealt with it but they call it dry drunk or dry gamblers and people that stay sober for periods of time, but, but don't work a program or don't work on their recovery. And I think that is the biggest thing is humble yourself, understand you have a disease, uh, understand that you can't do it alone. And, and, I don't want to say immerse yourself because I think people have different thing, beliefs on what the getting deep into a program, but, but work on yourself. I mean, really get down and work on yourself. Be honest with yourself. Open yourself up to vulnerability, which is difficult for most people. Um, <laughs> for, for most of us. <laughs> Pardon me for that. Um, but yeah, I think, I think an aftercare, aftercare once you've been into a program, continue that. I mean, I see a counselor often still. As, as uh, I know you have as well. And these are the important things is never stop working on yourself. Um, Thank you. That's pretty good advice. What... How do you feel about community, though? Is that important at all to associate with other people who've quit? It is. I think it is. Um, and you'll find out, you know, what that community means to you. I would say for 
a good amount of time after uh, I left treatment, I was very immersed in the program of GA and this. And, you know, as I evolved into doing these other things, I'm still involved in the program, but not, not in the way of, well, I go to GA all the time in these things, but I, I think it's such an important thing and uh, have a sponsor and have people that you can relate to and that can understand what you're going through. Being a part of that community is super important. Um, I agree. Those are some of the questions I forgot to ask earlier. So I'll ask you again, in case there's anything else I missed and you want to trigger it or cover, is there anything we missed? I, you know, I don't. I just, I appreciate you having me on here. And again, my biggest thing is working on awareness now. Um, getting out there, taking baby steps for me and working in the community um, and, and talking to who will ever listen to me. If you listen to me, I'll talk to you. And I, I think that's, anyone who wants to help people in the gambling community and, and help with this, that's our biggest, you know, that is really our biggest hurdle right now is, is bringing the awareness. And if somebody wanted to get in touch with you in regards to seed or awareness or any of that thing, what's the best way to reach you? Um, multiple ways. You can reach me at, uh, Brett at seedinc.care. Um, you can go to our website, seedinc.care. You can go to our Facebook page, which is miraculously seedinc.care. <laughs> and we have an Instagram page. Uh, all these ways you can get, get through to us and, and get in touch with us. Um, I'll tell you a little story. Um, not specifics about it but how we're starting to branch out is um, we got a call from a woman in Arizona recently um, for one of our, our new clients now and she found us through um, our website um, did some research and her mother is um, a gambling addict and wanted to get her mom into treatment so it's starting to spread um, the awareness. We talked to the mother, bef uh, the daughter beforehand. She's like, I just, I would never know that. I mean, that my my mother and my father went to to the casino all the time together. But I, you know, I would never know that this is a problem. So the awareness is starting. It, it's slow and it's baby steps. And through people like you and the work that you do, and hopefully for what we are doing here in the Fox Valley, in the state of Wisconsin, I can only hope that we reach more people and that is our main goal. Uh, I'm not concerned about raising money and those aren't my focuses. We're worried about helping people and, and doing the best we can in our community. Yes, thank you for all that you do, Brett. You're not gonna like my last question, but sure. I'm gonna ask it anyway. It doesn't have to be business related. But what is your favorite book? Um, you know, I don't like this question because I couldn't tell you the last book I read. But I'm being fair. I ask every single guest this question, so I couldn't not ask you. It would be like discriminating. Um, my favorite book. I, you know, I honestly don't know. I think early on at one time in my college career, I read the book Run, Baby, Run. Um, which was about a child who constantly ran from his parents' um, abusive relationship. I couldn't tell you who the author was. Okay, I, was I will look it up. It was one of the only books that I was able to finish from cover to end. So I'm going to go with that one. All right. Very good. We put it in, we put links in, in all our places. So, um, it's interesting to see what people say, especially people in the learning environment that are constantly doing all this stuff. Like your learning environment's different 
than most of ours. We're not all interns and progressing as rapidly in our careers. So uh, it's just an interesting question. So thank you for participating. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. All right. Well, I am going to say farewell. I do appreciate you being on the show. You're one of only two people that have had the honor of being on both of my shows other than me. So mm -hmm. thank you for well, that. I feel honored. Um, I really appreciate you having me and I know you will uh, and just continue to do the great things that you're doing with uh, gambling disorder and helping people. So I appreciate it. Thanks, Brett.